Well, good morning and welcome to our online Sunday service from Inverkip, Skemley, Wimsby Parish Churches. I hope you're all safe and well. Today we recognise the sacrifice and determination of those to overcome evil in the world as we commemorate the 75th anniversary of Victory in Europe. Again, we give thanks today for all those involved in the struggle of an equally ruthless foe with the pandemic of COVID-19, for those who have lost their lives in that struggle. Well, good morning from me and welcome again, as Archie said, to our online service this morning as we come together to give God thanks for his victory and just to remember everything that he's done for us. Well, let's begin our service in prayer. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, as we gather in your presence today, we are reminded again of how much our fragile lives need to be lived in your strength and protection. You have given us such a wonderful gift, yet we want to do things our own way, despite the consequences and suffering we bring upon ourselves. And as we give thanks today for the sacrifice made for us 75 years ago, we especially thank you for the sacrifice made by your son Jesus, that we may live in your love and forgiveness, as we ask it in his name. Amen. It was at nine o'clock on VE Day that the King had broadcast his message to the people of Britain, the British Empire, and the Commonwealth of Nations. But today, we give thanks to God for a great deliverance. Speaking from our empire's oldest capital city, war battered, I would never for one moment daunted or dismayed. Germany, the enemy who drove all Europe into war, has been finally overcome. In the Far East, we have yet to deal with the Japanese, a determined and cruel foe. The Queen and I know that the ordeals which you have endured throughout the Commonwealth and Empire. We are proud to have shared some of them with you. And we know also that we shall all face the future together. In the hour of danger, we humbly committed our cause into the hand of God. And he has been our strength and shield. Let us thank him for his mercies. And in this hour of victory, to commit ourselves and our new task to the guidance of the same strong hand. Well, as we remember those words from 75 years ago, let's sing together now the hymn, Be Thou My Vision.
Well, again, let's join our hearts together in prayer. Let us give thanks for the selfless and courageous service and sacrifice of those who brought peace to Europe and for the good example they have given us. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. We pray for nations still devastated by war, for their people and their leaders, and for those who suffer the effects or memories of past wars, for veterans, for those who mourn, and for all innocent victims whose lives have been shattered by the cruelty of others. Lord, hear us. Lord, in your mercy, hear us. Let us give thanks for those who work for peace and liberty throughout the world, for the armed forces of the crown, for all who strive to bring it to an end to injustice and oppression. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. We pray for those in our own day who have grown weary or lost hope as a result of violence or terror, for all refugees and displaced people, and for those who seek to address the causes of discord and distrust. Lord, hear us. Lord, in your mercy, hear us. Let us give thanks for the reconciliation of former enemies, for the flourishing of goodwill between them, and for the many blessings we enjoy as a result of the sacrifices which have been made for peace. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. We pray for the young people of our own day and for all who will shape the future of this nation, that they may be inspired by those who have gone before them to serve as they have been served. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For nations coming together, working together for the good of all, and for all that has been accomplished and for the progress which has been made, let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Forgive us for our for our thinking that in the gift of life we know it all. Forgive us. In the gift of life, life in all its fullness, that we will not share it. Forgive us. Lord, for not trusting in your cross that we can be better people, the people you wish us to be. And Lord, we await your return when we can finally live in peace. For we ask it in your name, saying together the prayer that you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our Old Testament reading this morning is taken from Psalm 91, reading from verses 14 to 16. God says, I will save those who love me and will protect those who acknowledge me as Lord. When they call to me, I will answer them. And when they are in trouble, I will be with them. I will rescue them and honor them. I will reward them with long life. I will save them. Amen. Well, our second reading this morning comes from Matthew's Gospel, Matthew chapter 24, verses 3 to 8. As the disciples sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him in private. Tell us when all this will be, they asked, and what will happen to show that it is the time for your coming and the end of the age? Jesus answered, Be on your guard and do not let anyone deceive you. Many men claiming to speak for me will come and say, I am the Messiah, and they will deceive many people. You're going to hear the noise of battles close by and the news of battles far away, but do not be troubled. Such things must happen, but they do not mean that the end has come. Countries will fight each other. Kingdoms will attack one another. There will be famines and earthquakes everywhere. And all these things are like the first pains of childbirth. Amen. Well, hello again and welcome to this part of our worship from the parish churches of Inverkip and Skernley Weems Bay as we continue to give God thanks for his victory and to hear him speak to us through these very challenging times. And it's a welcome from me as we join together now in Inverkip Church. The conflict in Europe is long over. Now, 75 years later, as we give thanks that the 
that evil did not triumph. We remember the sacrifice and courage that was made by many men and women and children of a generation that is now fading into history. The war to end all wars gave rise to the conflict of the Second World War and the horrors and barbarism that we inflicted on each other. Today we give God thanks that we do not live under the tyranny of the jackboot, but through their sacrifice we enjoy the freedom to determine how we should live our lives today. The Bible tells us no king is saved by the size of his army. No warrior escapes by his great strength. A horse is a vain hope for deliverance despite all its great strength it cannot save. But the eyes of the Lord are on those who fear him and those whose hope is in his unfailing love. We'll find that in Psalm 33. The great preacher Charles Spurgeon wrote, The strongest fighters melt like snowflakes when God is against them. Well, pre-war Germany had been building up a great and powerful military force, yet Germany, in the aftermath of the ruins of war, were to reflect that the Lord is not on the side of those who have the biggest war machine and largest armies. The Bible tells us that his eyes watch out for those who look to him as Lord, who fully understand that victory only comes from him. Well, 75 years ago in London, the royal family led the nation in a thanksgiving service at St. Paul's Cathedral. Many heads of state attended along with Winston Churchill and all the political leaders of the day. The crowds lined the streets, listening to the service on loudspeakers. And according to Path News of the day, the mood of those who attended was different because from the joy celebration two days before, because there was a recognition that God had helped them in their time of need. Now was the time to give God thanks. Well, I grew up in a time just after the war. I was part of the baby boomer generation. It was a time when people did not have a lot of money. And I wonder if I'm looking back with rose-tinted glasses, but people did seem to be happier. I had a good and happy childhood, a generation after the war, and it was installed or instilled in me to get a good education, to work hard, to get a good job, something that I would enjoy, a, you know, a job that I would enjoy doing. And neighbours did look out for one another. And I suppose that it was drummed into us to give someone, an elderly, an elderly person, your seat in the bus. Don't talk to your elders, work hard. However, the lessons of the Second World War never touched me from the point of view that there is something dark in human nature. The 60s were a time of huge technological innovation, from the Gemini space program through to the Apollo moon landings. I was sent to Sunday school, the Boys Brigade, and I remember there would be hundreds and hundreds of young people turn out on parade on Remembrance Sunday. But I don't remember being told how much I needed a savior because of what sin can do in our lives. There was a drive to build a better nation, build better lives. People were going back to church. But I would go in the opposite direction, like many of my generation, not knowing how much I needed Jesus in my life. And to my sorrow, I was to discover that there is a fine dividing line between self-interest and selfishness. Well, I was born on the 18th of May, 1982, and yes, I know I look a lot older than someone who's just about to turn 38, but I had a very hard paper round when I was younger. My generation is known as Generation Y, which is a generation born in the 1980s and 90s, and we are the children of the baby boomers and are perceived as being increasingly familiar with digital and electronic technology. However, if you know me, you will know that digital and electronic technology is definitely not something which I could be closely associated with. I would be more in line with a technophobe, which is a person who fears, dislikes, or avoids new technology. In fact, it was Archie who helped me come slowly into this century by pointing out the fact that I still operated with a file of facts and bits of paper 
So hence the reason you will now always see me using this tablet. <laughs> Although my file of facts is still very much in use as it doubles up as my diary. This morning as we celebrate victory and remember how that must have felt at that time, I feel it's so important to remember the great sacrifice of the many people who gave their lives for us so that we might have the freedom to choose. And with my generation, we have been blessed with many things and the use of technology just being one of them. However, it seems like the more stuff that we have, then the more it can block us off from what we were created for. And that is to have a living and personal relationship with Jesus. This in turn can make us to choose to reject God and to live for personal gain and for our own interests. And like Archie said, I also cho chose to go my own way and suffered greatly as, as a result of my choices. But praise God, that was not the end of the story. And with God, there is always a future in failure. And here I am today to bear witness to his grace, mercy and love, which is available for us all. Amen. Well, Joseph Goebbels, Hitler's chief propagandist, said in a broadcast on the 19th of April, 1936, that Germany had been transformed into a great house of the Lord, where the Führer, as our mediator, stands before the throne of God. It was Hitler himself who ordered that he be presented as a deified Messiah. Another powerful voice of the Nazi party, Dr. Robert Ley, proclaimed that we believe on this earth in Adolf Hitler, Adolf Hitler alone. We believe in National Socialism as a creed which is a source of grace. And Jesus warned us that many would come claiming to be the Messiah. And that is still true today. Many claim to bring salvation, more jobs, more spending power. And today people can amass such a fortune that they can never spend in a hundred lifetimes. And children go hungry. People have no jobs and drugs have a hold on their young people. I'm not saying that it's all bad, but one thing in our drive to build a better society after the Second World War, we have forgotten that we need a savior in God's only son, Jesus Christ. Do we need to continually bring suffering on ourselves? War, disease, poverty, before we realize this, before we come before God on our knees and ask his forgiveness shown to us in Jesus. What is God saying to us in these times? Perhaps that we should be praying fervently for our nation, that he would raise up leaders who would rule us with wisdom and compassion, that we might value those that our leaders have said have no value, that we might understand that through Jesus Christ, we will find our redeemed humanity and have compassion and forgiveness for each other when we fail to live as Jesus commanded us. Love one another as I have loved you. What is happening to our world just now? What is this all about? What is happening to us? What are we all about? Why are we here? Well, I'm sure that many of you will have heard me say many times that the two most important days of your life are the day you were born and the day you find out why you were born. And with this coronavirus pandemic and in past times of war, people have begun to ask these questions. The stats show us that downloads of Bible apps globally rose dramatically during the month of March. The top English language Bible on Google Play and App Store was installed almost 2 million times the highest amount ever recorded. Also, one of the UK's largest online Christian bookstores, Eden, has seen physical Bible sales rise by 55% in April, while Google searches for prayer and Christianity have gone through the roof. Since lockdown began, one of Britain's largest churches, Holy Trinity Brompton, has seen turnout double for its online alpha course, which is a course for non-believers to ask questions about faith and Christianity. 
Alpha's found, founder, Nicky Gumbel, said in an online Easter conference that he has never known a time in his life when people are more open to God's word than they are now. There are no distractions, there's no football, there's no sport, there's no entertainment. People have time to hear the gospel. Indeed, never in modern history have so many people been sanctioned to their own homes in what the Dean of Gloucester Cathedral, Stephen Lake, calls an enforced period of reflection. So how do we find out why we were born? What is our purpose? Well, today we can find the answer from our Old Testament reading in Psalm 91. And with the incredible promises found in these verses, we read in the last sentence, God will satisfy his child with a long, satisfying life that reveals his salvation. The emphasis in that sentence is not so much on long life, but on the satisfaction and salvation the Lord will give his followers. The center of God's will, which is simply doing what he wants us to do, really is the place where we find out why we were born and truly can understand our purpose on this earth. Amen. This 75th anniversary of VE Day, let us not forget what that generation fought and died and lived for. Well, let us again join our hearts together in prayer. Heavenly Father, we again give you thanks for victory in Europe 75 years ago. Father, we thank you for the sacrifice of so many who gave their lives that we might have our freedom. Lord Jesus, we thank you that you gave your life so that we could be free and for your spirit that you sent to live in us. Father, during these difficult times that we are living through, help us to find your joy even in the midst of our trials. We pray that you would teach us what it means to see beyond our troubles, knowing that you are with us. Father, we see the real challenges that those around us are facing. Lord, we ask that you intervene to be with those who are in need, to prompt us to participate with you as you care for your people, and most of all, to restore creation and to make all things new. Father, we pray that we would not be anxious, but that you would give us your peace. Lord, help us to live differently in the midst of our trials so that the world might see you in us. Father, we again pray for our loved ones and for those who we know are in such desperate need of your touch at this time, taking a moment of silence to bring them before you now. Father, we thank you so much for the way you care for us. And most of all, we thank you for your love. Lord, we thank you and we love you. All this we pray in the comforting name of Jesus. Amen. We will now sing together a hymn from CH4 Hymn Book, number 159. And the words will appear on the screen. It is Lord for the Years.
as we finish our time together, we'll finish with a blessing from all the churches in this nation. Amen. Lord.